Since this is a webinar all about Lightroom and the photo suite today, I'm going to be working with Lightroom primarily as my base program. We're going to be covering about how to open your images into the suite. There are a couple different ways, and there are also a few preferences that are actually really good to know when you're working with Lightroom in the suite. And we'll also be talking about a little bit of editing through specific modules in the suite as well. So there are a couple of different things that we're going to be talking about today. Now let's start out and just get into how to open your images in the suite. The first way, we've got our photo here. I can right click or control click on my image and it brings up this drop down menu. If I scroll down to edit in, I have a select amount of modules here that I can go through and I can open up. So let's say that we wanted to take this image into perfect portrait first. I could take perfect portrait and select it here. Now, when I do so, it opens up this dialog box. It's going to ask me whether I'd like to edit a copy of my image, edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustments, or edit my original photo. Now, if I edit my original, this option won't be available if you're working with raw files. So if you're a big raw file user, this is a PSD copy of the original image, so that's why it's giving me this option. But if you're a raw user, this edit original isn't going to pop up. You'll always edit a copy. Now what I suggest if you are working with raw files is to edit a copy with your Lightroom adjustments. It'll save any of the changes that you made inside the develop module in Lightroom and you can continue your editing process. You can also select how you'd like to copy your file over. So it gives you the ability to change things like the file format, color space, bit depth, and resolution here. So I know that I want my file format for this copied image to be a PSD. Awesome. But let's say I wanted to readjust my color space. I could go through, I've got a couple different options here. I can also change my bit depth. Maybe I don't need 16. Maybe I want to transfer it over to 8. And then I could also change my resolution just by typing in a new number. So let's say that I'll type in 240 instead of 300. So it's very easy to manipulate what type of file you'd like to copy over from those raw images. Now, I'm not going to click edit now because I also want to show you the other way that you can get into the suite. When you have your image open or selected, just go up to the file menu and scroll down to plugin extras. Now here, you're going to see there is a huge menu of a whole bunch more options. You'll see the Perfect Photo Suite 8 up at the top, and then you'll also see Perfect Layers and Perfect Mask, which you didn't see in the previous menu. One of the reasons why it's really nice to go through this file menu is that you have the ability to go through the suite as a standalone. So for this image, let's say I wanted to take it into Perfect Portrait and I wanted to take it into Perfect Effects, and then maybe I wanted to take it into Resize. I can go through and choose the Perfect Photo Suite 8 option up at the top and use a multi-module based workflow. When you right click on the image like we had done before and gone through the edit in menu, it only gives me the ability to access select individual modules and only open those up in a single form. So if I go to Perfect Portrait, I can only edit in Perfect Portrait and then it will automatically dump me back here into Lightroom. So if you're going to be doing a lot of heavy editing, it's nice to be able to go through that plugin extras menu. And that's typically what I do. But if you know that you're doing a very, very quick adjustment, so for this image, let's say all I wanted to do was Perfect Portrait, I can just go down and choose Perfect Portrait 8. Now, one of the questions that you may be asking is if we go through the file menu and we go down to plugin extras, if I select Perfect Portrait from there, am I going to get the same menu that we saw before? I'm going to go ahead and do that. You'll notice that it automatically opens me up into the photo suite. It didn't ask me whether I'd like to edit a copy. It didn't ask me whether I'd like to adjust the file copy that I'm creating. None of that. One of the reasons why it does that is because 
it gives you the ability to adjust that in the preferences menu in the perfect photo suite. I'm going to go up to the perfect photo suite 8 menu in the top left hand corner and scroll down to preferences. Now when I do so, you have this dialog box here and you've got a whole bunch of different preferences for the photo suite. And you can adjust any of these if you like. You have the ability to change things like your preview background color. Right now I have it set it to dark gray, but you can change that. When you open the program as a standalone, you can adjust whether you'd like to open in browse or layers as your base program. Lots of different options here. But up at the top, there is a Lightroom plugins tab. And we'll click on this you'll recognize all of these different drop-down menus. We saw these before in that edit in dialog box that popped up. This is, these are the exact same options that you had there, but this correlates to your plugin extras menu. If you're working on raw files, it will automatically create a copy of your image using these options here. So if this had been an original raw file, I would now have a PSD in this color space, in this bit depth, with this resolution. What's also really nice is you can check the stack with original box, which means that if you go through the plugin extras menu and you edit a copy of your raw file and bring it back into the photos, bring it back into Lightroom, it will automatically stack your new edited image with your original file. So this is a really important tab inside the preferences dialog to know about when you're working with Lightroom. And remember, it only correlates with that plugin extras menu. It doesn't correlate with the edit in menu. I know it's a little confusing because you've got two different ones that you can go to, but knowing the differences and being able to access them separately is really nice because you can choose what you want to do. Now I'm going to go ahead and click cancel because I don't make any changes in there. And while we're in Perfect Portrait, I want to go ahead and show you how to use it. Now, Perfect Portrait is obviously, thus the name, our portrait editing software. And it places a green box around the face or faces in an image when you open up a photo. So you'll see she's got this little green rectangle around her face right now. And that means that it's gone through and it's selected or tried to select the eyes, the lips, and the teeth of her face as well as selecting the skin. Now it's already applied some baseline adjustments to the image, but I want to go in and make sure that it took a good selection around all of those facial features. And then I want to go through and I want to adjust the editing on the face. So to do that, I'll click inside the green rectangle and it's going to zoom in for me. Now it did a, a really good job of selecting her face here. But if there are any sections that you need to readjust, there are these little control points, these little white dots all around the eyes, the lips, and the teeth. You can click on any of these to drag them out. Didn't select all of the mouth, so I'm just making sure that I pull it out a little bit so I get all of the lips and all of the teeth. I can also adjust the eyes if it didn't get quite enough of the whites of the eyes. I'm just clicking and dragging to make sure that I get all of that info there. And that looks pretty good. It was a very good selection the first time around. And just in case it doesn't work the first time or you have maybe an eye that doesn't look quite right or didn't select the teeth, just remember you can click and drag any of these points out to readjust them when you're done. Now, when you've gone through and they're in place, up in the top right hand corner of the screen, there is a hide controls button. When I click this, it hides all of those control points so that I don't have to stare at them while I'm making any edits. On the right hand side is where we're going to do our skin retouching. Up at the top is the face size drop down menu and it's actually one of my favorites. And I didn't explain this in one of my last Lightroom webinars, and I wanted to make sure I explained it this time because I think it's really interesting. The face size drop down menu adjusts the facial mask that's happening on your image. So it's gone through and it's not only selected those features, but it's also selected the skin on the image. When I open up the face size drop down menu, it shows me the mask that it's placed around the face. 
Now, what's great about this is anywhere that you can see the skin or see part of the photo, that means it's being affected by the skin retouching. If it didn't select enough information, you can change this over to large and it will increase the area of information that it is choosing. If it took a little too much, like you'll see it took kind of her, her hair and it took a little bit of, I guess her scarf or her turtleneck down there, I can scroll down to small. It's gonna shrink that mask in a little bit, be more selective about what parts it's going to adjust. And a lot of times I swap this over to small because I don't have to do any editing, it just shrinks that mask in for me and I'm good to go. So it's a really great little menu and I think a lot of people don't know what it does. So this is one of my favorites and I like to use it a lot. Now, once we've gone through and that face mask looks awesome, I can make adjustments. We've got our blemishes slider, which allows you to reduce all of the little blemishes on someone's face. It's set to 50 right now, so it's already added a little bit of blemish removal, but you can see when I drop this down to zero, you can see all of those little acne spots on her forehead. There are a whole bunch of little fine lines around her face. And when I move the blemishes slider over, it helps soften them just a little bit more. The smoothing slider adds a little bit of softness and smoothness to the skin. It's already set to about 20. I can drop this down to zero if I don't want any smoothing, or I can push this over to the right a little bit more if I really want to soften out her skin. There are a whole bunch of other sliders in here that you can play around with, including shine reduction, shadow removal, and texture. I like the shadow removal slider because it brightens up a lot of the shadows on someone's face and makes it appear as though it's a little bit brighter. I think that one's really nice to use, especially on images that might have a little bit of a dark hue anywhere. And then the last one at the bottom that I want to mention is the evenness slider. This one's really important. It helps you even out the color of skin tone. So not necessarily the texture, but the actual color of it. Sometimes you have someone who, we'll drop this down to zero, who may have a little bit of red on their skin, maybe a little bit of pink somewhere that you don't necessarily like, and you want to flatten out the skin color. That's when the evenness slider comes in. Move this over to the right. It's pulling away a little bit of the redness in her skin and flattening it out so it doesn't look quite so so pink on her cheeks, doesn't have quite as many little red spots on her forehead, very, very easily done. Instead of having to do this with lots of different layers, you have one slider that just does it all in one fell swoop, which is really nice. Now, next you have a color correction slider, which is great. You can color correct your image based on skin tone instead of white point. If I take my amount slider and I move it over to the right, it's gonna help remove that bluish color cast that was on my image. Let me show you the before and after there. This is my original photo, which you'll see has that almost purplish hue over it. And this is our after image. She looks a little bit more normal. She doesn't have that bluish hue and her skin looks a little bit warmer than it did before. It automatically went in because it selected the skin in the picture and it color corrected the image based on that. Really, really nice. And then last, down at the bottom, you have your eyes and mouth pane. It's already whitened the whites of the eyes for me. I can adjust this a little bit if I need to. It's added a little bit of detail to the irises of the eyes, which I like to add just a little bit more to really make them pop out. It's whitened the teeth for me. If it did it a little too much, I can move that to the left, or if I wanna whiten them a bit more, I can move that to the right. And then you can also go in and add vibrance to the lip color. Lots and lots of different options here. Now let's really quickly take a look at our before and after here. To view a before and after, there's a little icon down in the bottom left-hand corner of your image. It's a little preview box. You can turn it on and off. There's also a keyboard shortcut. It's Control or Command P. So two different ways to do it. It's totally up to you. Now this is our original image color cast, no retouching done, nothing whatsoever. And this is our after image with perfect portrait. Not only have we gone through and added retouching, but we've also gone through and color corrected and brightened a whole bunch of facial features all in one fell swoop. So perfect portrait is a pretty amazing to per pretty amazing program to use when you need kind of a one stop shop for your portrait editing. Now when I click apply, 
it's going to go through and it's going to make those adjustments to my image. It's going to save my photo and it's going to bring me back here into Lightroom. Now, one of the great things about working with Lightroom here is that it automatically brings back my new edited copy. So this is the photo that I had gone through Perfect Portrait with, and I have access to it again here in Lightroom. So if I want to continue my editing process, I can do that. All right, so that was a quick overview of kind of how to use Perfect Portrait. I wanna talk about some of the other programs that we have in the photo suite. The next one that I wanna talk about are layers. Now, when you're working with layers, you have a whole bunch of different ways that you can open your images into the suite. Now, let's say that we want to go through and combine these two photos. We have one that's been exposed for the background there where the mountain is, and we have one that's been exposed for the foreground, the trees and the dirt and the motorcycle and so on are all really nice, really bright, but the mountain in the back has been blown out. And we need to go through and we need to combine these two photos together. Very easy. Now, I'm gonna go into my Lightroom library and I'm gonna select both of these images. I've got one chosen. On the Mac, I'm gonna hold the Command key. On a PC, I'm gonna hold the Control key and I'm gonna click on my second image. So now I've got two photos chosen and I wanna combine them. Up in the File menu, I'm gonna scroll down to Plug and Extras. There are two different ways that you can go into Perfect Layers. The first is just by clicking on Perfect Layers. The second is by going down to the bottom and you'll see there's this option, and this is new with the 8.1 update that you guys are gonna get with the Perfect Photo Suite 8. So you've got this option now, which is really nice. You can open these images as layers in Perfect Layers. Now I'm gonna show you the differences between these two. I know it seems a little confusing right now. For this photo, I'm gonna choose Open as Layers in Perfect Layers 8. It's gonna go through, it's gonna export both of those images for me, and it's gonna place them on a layer stack here together inside Perfect Layers. Now I have my overexposed image on top of my underexposed image. And you can see I can turn that top layer on and off. And it did a great job of just adding these photos together. Now to combine these images really quickly, I'm gonna use something called our masking bug. And the masking bug is a great tool it creates a gradient based mask, which is really great when you're working with horizon lines like this one. Now we'll select it on the left hand side. It's this little box with a gradient inside. And up in the tool options bar, there's a shapes drop down menu. This gives you the ability to select what shape of mask you'd like to create. And you'll see you've got a lot of basics. You've got some vignettes, and then you have some linears. You've got linear top, bottom, left, and right. Now what we want to do is we have this overexposed photo and we want to remove the top part of the image. So I'm just going to go and choose linear top. It automatically places a mask on my image and I can go through and I can make adjustments to it if I want to. I'm going to click and drag on the dotted line on the top and the bottom. It adds a feathering amount to the edge of the mask and I can also rotate it. There's this little button on the right hand side to let me rotate the mask. And I can also click inside that little circle in the center to move it around. Very easy to add this kind of mask to my image. Very basic to combine different layers together. Now, that was a very, very quick introduction to layers. I actually want to show you what the other perfect layers option does. So I'm going to close out of this. And we're going to jump back over to Lightroom here. Now let's say that we want to create some sort of collage. We want to combine a couple different images together. And we don't necessarily want them all on separate layers right away. I'm going to select these three other images here. There's a picture of some boots. I can make my thumbnails a little bit bigger so you guys can see them. I've got this picture of boots, a texture, and then this portrait here. And I want to create some sort of collage based thing. I'm going to choose each one of these images here, go up to my file menu, and down to plug in extras again. 
Now, when I choose the just plain perfect layers option, it's going to export all three of these images here, but it's going to do it on separate tabs. Each one of these photos is opened separately on their, in their own images on their own layer stacks, and I can combine them as I want to. What's great about this is it gives me the ability to edit these separately and go through and make adjustments to them if I want to. So let's say I wanted to take this boots photo into effects really quickly before I go through and combine it with my other images. I can do that, which is really nice. If I wanted to take the portrait image, I can click on it in that little tab selector at the top, and I could make, if I needed to take this into perfect portrait, I could do that very quickly and then bring it back and add it into my collage. So it's very nice if you want to do a little bit of editing to your images before you go through and combine them together. Now let me show you how to combine images when you're working in a situation like this. I'm going to click on this overlay PSD. This is my texture image and I want to place it on top of my boots photo. To do that, go up to your layer menu and scroll down to copy layer. What we're doing is we're copying that texture layer in our layer stack over here. You can see I'm kind of circling it and clicking it on the right hand side. So we're copying our texture. I'm going to click on the boots photo in my tab selector, go to my layer menu, and this time we'll choose paste layer. It's gone through and it's taken the concrete texture and pasted that layer on top of my boots photo in my layer stack. Now I can go through and I can, for this, for this image, I want to change the blending mode of this texture. I want to blend it into my background photo. So I'll go up to my blending drop down menu and I'm just going to hover my mouse over the options until I find one that I think works really well with this image. None so far. There we go. That's what I want. I want kind of that rusty look with that concrete texture on those boots. So I've adjusted my blending mode and now I can play around with the opacity of my layer. And that's the strength of your layer. So this texture is a little strong and I drop the layer opacity down just reduces it a little bit so it's not quite so intense. Now we can do the exact same thing with our portrait image. I've got my photo open. Same thing, we'll go up to our layer menu, we'll choose copy layer, we'll go to our boots photo, and go back to our layer menu, and choose paste layer. Now, for this image, you'll see that it's been placed kind of smack dab in the center of the image. If you have photos that you're either combining or images that you're doing a collage with, sometimes you're going to want to readjust where they are, or maybe the size of them. The tool to do that is up on the top left hand corner. It's called the transform tool. It's a little bounding box right up at the top. And when you select it, whatever layer you have chosen in your layer stack, which is my portrait layer, the one that I just added, it'll get a bounding box around your image. We'll see there's little dots on the top left, right, bottom left, and bottom right corners. I can move my layer around just by clicking and dragging it. I can also resize it just by clicking on any of the little dots, any of those little points around the edge. Now, when you're working on a photo like this one, it's, a, it's obviously someone's face, and we don't want to ruin the proportions of the image. We don't want to go through and make her look skinnier, fatter, taller, shorter, whatever it might be. We want to make sure that she stays the same and that the proportions are correct. So before you resize an image, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and then drag the photo in and out. It will make sure that those proportions stay the same so that you don't end up squishing an image. So I can make this a little bit smaller here, and then we'll move it around. You can also rotate it by holding your mouse around the outside of the bounding box, and you get this little circular arrow. And when I click it, I can drag this out, and I can readjust the rotation. Once I've gone through and I've made changes with my transform tool, I'll go up to the top right-hand corner and click Apply. Now it's committed that change, 
and I can go through and let's say I wanted to add a border around to this image, I could do it. Or maybe I want to add a texture to just this image or whatever it might be, I can go through and I can continue that editing process from here. So it's very easy to use multiple different images together inside layers. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to click on the save button here and it's going to go through and it's going to save that for me. And we're going to close each one of these images and jump back over to Lightroom. Now inside Lightroom, you'll see this was my original Boots photo here. And this is the collage that we had created very quickly inside Perfect Layers. And they're stacked together here so that I know exactly where to find my photos. So it's very easy, very, very easy to combine multiple images. And you have lots of different options for how you do that inside Perfect Layers, which I think is one of the best things that is there when it comes to the program is that we give you lots of different ways to combine those photos together so that you're not just stuck with with one way or the other if you don't like it so it's really really nice all right so that's kind of more of the basics of lightroom the next thing that i want to show you is how to take an image into perfect effects and along with perfect effects there's also a brand new batch processing tool that's easier to use than we've ever had before so i'm going to show you a little bit of both here so that you know not only how to edit your images in a really fun way but also how to batch process them so all right i've got a whole bunch of images here and i want to go through and i want to open a photo inside the suite i'm going to take an image this time I'm just going to right click on my photo because I only want to take it into effects. We'll go to edit in and choose perfect effects. I'm going to edit a copy with my Lightroom adjustments here and make a couple changes to my copy file options section and we'll click edit. Now there are a whole bunch of new filters that have come with effects in the last couple of months since we've released. Perfect Photo Suite 8. If you are a user of Photo Suite 7, there are a whole bunch of changes and effects that have been made. So it's going to look a little bit different than it used to. And we've got tons of new categories, tons of new filters, really, really exciting stuff. On the left hand side of the screen, you have your filters library. These are all of the different base filters that you have that you can apply to your images. You can open any of these if you want to. We'll open up the cross process category. And these are all of the different filter presets that you can apply. You'll see we've got a couple different cross-process ones. If I don't want to add a cross-process look to my image, I can just close that out and we'll open up another one. Say we wanted to add a split tone to our image. Now, the filters library is a little bit different than what we used to have called the presets library, but you still have access to presets if you want them. So these are all of your base filters, but if I jump over to my presets tab, which is in the top left hand corner of my screen, it shows me all of the different perfect effects, old version of perfect effects, it shows me all of the different presets that I still have access to. And all of the ones that you used to be able to apply in effects are still here in the new version, which is really nice. Now, one of, I think one of the most popular categories was the movie looks category right down here I can open this up and you'll recognize a lot of these if you are a photo suite 7 user um, so they're all still here and I can add any of these if I want to now, the other tab on the top left is going to be your favorites tab anytime I hover my mouse over a preset there's a little flag that appears in the top left hand corner and this indicates whether you'd like to save a preset as a favorite so I really like this Forenza preset. It's one of the ones that I think looks really great, especially on like autumn based landscapes. And I want to save it in my favorites category. So I'll just click inside that little flag. It fills in and it will pop over to my favorites library on the right hand side. So I can scroll through and you'll see I've got tons of different ones in here. Right down at the bottom, right down in the middle, I guess, is the Forenza preset. And there are a whole bunch of others in here that I've saved as as favorites, the ones that I like to use. All right, let's jump back to our filter library here. For this image, I want to start out and open up the sunshine category. And this is one of the new new filters, new presets that we've added into Perfect Effects. And it's definitely 
probably my favorite. I think it's the most amazing. And it, it's a way for you to take an image that's a little flat. This photo was taken on a, a cold fall day here in Oregon, but it was, we still had a little bit of sun. It was just kind of coming through some of the clouds. It wasn't very strong. And I want to give it more of that sunshiny, bright glow that you get when you take photos out in the sun. I don't want it to look quite so, quite so flat, quite so drab. I want to warm it up a little bit. That's what that sunshine filter is there to do. I've got a couple different presets that I can add. You'll see the natural is one of my favorites. I favorite it up in that top left-hand corner. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to choose the sunshine preset here. And this one's also a favorite. I like to use this one a lot. So I'll click on it to apply. And you'll see it instantly adds that kind of bright, high contrast, high vibrancy look to my image. On the right hand side of my photo, I have my layer options or my filter options pane. And I can make adjustments to this if I want to. Up at the top here, we've got an amount slider. I can adjust the amount of sunshine I want to add to my image here. So it's set to about 50, but if I want to push that over to the right, it'll increase it just a little bit. I can hand adjust the warmth of my image here. So I can go through, if I have an image that is a little cold and I really want to make it quite a bit warmer, I can just move this over to the right and I can add that very soft, warm, hazy look to the image, which is really nice. I have a saturation slider here. I can saturate my image and pump that up a little bit if I want to. I can also desaturate it just a little bit if it's a bit too intense. And then last, I have a glow slider. If you're adding a, a sunshine look, a lot of times you'll want to add a little bit of a soft, hazy glow. And I can push that glow slider over to the right. And it's very subtle, but it's very, very nice. Now, on the right-hand side in my filter stack, there are a couple different things that we can do. There are plus and minus buttons on the bottom left. I can add a new filter, or I can subtract the one that I have. I have these two new icons. One of them is a brush, and one of them is a gradient, and they have these little plus and minus buttons on the top and left, top and bottom here. These indicate our new adjustment brush and adjustable gradient filters. And these are really, really exciting. They give you the ability to add selective adjustments to your image. And then last, on the right-hand side, there's a little trash icon. This trash icon is very different then the little minus button. The trash icon deletes all of the filters that you may have in your filter stack, whereas the minus button only deletes one at a time. So it's important to know the difference between those two because sometimes if you click the trash button, it'll go through and delete all of your filters there and, and you may not necessarily want that. Now I'm gonna click on the plus button here because I wanna add another filter on top of this. And this time I wanna show you that adjustment brush. I'll click on this here, and down in the filter options pane, you'll see a couple, it's changed a little bit since that last filter. I can go through and I can select a preset. So let's say that we wanted to go in and add a little bit of selective detail. I'm going to click on the detail preset at the top. It's going to go through, and you'll see that down here in all of these different sliders, it's gone in and pumped the detail slider up to 40. Now, when I hover my mouse over my image, a little brush will appear and I can paint in this effect where I want it to be. So I'm gonna say, let's, let's say we wanna add detail to the scarf in the front. I'm just gonna click and drag and you'll see it's crisping up all of the details in that scarf only over the areas that I'm painting in. Now, what's great about this, so we've gone through and we've added that to the scarf there I can readjust how much I've applied even after I've gone in and painted it. If I take this detail slider, I can pump this over to the right to add a lot more. Now, this is way too much, but you get the idea that I can make these changes even after I've readjusted my mask. So I'm gonna pull that back down towards about 30. Let's say I also wanted to adjust the color of the scarf. I want to cool it down a bit. I'm just gonna move that over to the left and it'll go through and readjust the color of it as well. I'm going to warm it up and push that over to the right a little bit because I thought maybe it was a little bit too green. So I want to pump in a little bit more orange in there. So anytime that I add 
an adjustment brush layer, I get a mask that I can continually readjust. If I want to, I can also add other areas in here. If I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the eyes, I can click and drag. If I wanted to add a little bit to the hair, I could go in and do that as well. So tons of different ways that you can use this adjustment brush. Now, one of the last ones in here that I want to show you really quickly is the vintage category. And this is our new vintage filter. We have a vintage filter and an antique one, and they're kind of similar, but I want to show you the vintage one. It's my favorite. I'm going to click and add this red yellow filter here and we'll click to apply it. And we're going to go through and there we go. I'm going to add an empty layer and we'll click on the red yellow. Now, the way that the vintage filter works is on the right hand side in the filter options pane, you have a style drop down menu. These are all of the different color styles that you can add to your images, kind of those vintage tones. And anytime you hover your mouse over these styles, it'll show you a preview of what they're going to look like. So we've got a whole bunch of different options here and you can scroll through them at your own leisure and find one that you really like. One of my favorites is down at the bottom, it's called Warm, and it adds this kind of cross-process style to the image. There's also one called Ocean, which looks really nice. It gives you this kind of faded film slide negative look, and I think that it's really nice. So you can go through and you can make adjustments here, and you can choose which one you like. I'm going to select Oatmeal. You have an amount slider. This is just how intense it is on your image. So if it's a little too much, I can just move that slider to the left. You have a saturation slider here. This only affects the saturation of your base image and not the entire color styling that you've added. So if I drop the saturation down to negative 100, I still have that kind of warm tone, <clears throat> warm tone over my image. If I push the saturation slider to the right, it's going to saturate the background image, but it's going to leave the color styling alone. So this is a really, really nice one to play around with. And then last, you could go in and you can add film grain here. If you really want that authentic vintage look, add some grain and really make the photo pop. Now, <clears throat> you'll see that on the right hand side in my filter stack, I've gone through and added two layers. There's the sunshine layer and the vintage layer. We can take a look at our before and after image really quickly. This is our original photo and this is our after. Now let's say that we want to apply these two layers that we just created to other images. We want to save it as a preset. Go up to your preset menu at the top of your screen and choose save preset. It gives me the ability to create a preset name. So we could call this warm vintage sunshine preset. It'll be very straightforward with this. I can place it in a category here. If you don't have any categories, you can add one right up at the top. So I could call this Liz's vintage presets and we'll click OK. Now I have my own custom category of presets. And then you can also type in a creator and a description if you'd like. Now when I go ahead and click create, over in my presets library on the left hand side of my screen, right up at the top is Liz's vintage presets and I can open this up and there is the warm vintage sunshine preset that we just created. Now I'm going to go ahead and click apply because I want to save this change to my image and I want to show you how to batch process multiple files here using that preset that we just created. It's one of those things that's a lot of fun and really really easy to do. All right now saving our photo and it's dropping us back into Lightroom here. So we've got our before and after image stacked together, nice and easy here. I have a whole bunch of photos that I want to add those same layers to. A couple different portrait images that I want to go through and adjust. So I'm going to go and choose a couple of those. I'm just clicking and holding the command key as I click so that I can access a couple different files here. Now I'm just going to add it to three images so it'll batch process very quickly for you guys. I'm going to go up to the file menu, down to plugin extras, and choose our new perfect batch 8. Now the way that perfect batch works is it batch processes your images through multiple different modules if you'd like. 
up at the top is going to be your source pane and will automatically be chosen as selected items. These are the photos that you've chosen in Lightroom, so you're not going to make any changes to this here. Down at the bottom is your destination pane. No changes will be made to this either. It's saving it to something called a round trip, which means it's opening it up into the suite and round tripping it and bringing it back to Lightroom. So these two panes right here, you're not going to change at all. What you're going to do is click to add a module. It's this little fast forward button that points down. And here you can choose which one you'd like to open, which module you'd like to process through. So we're going to choose perfect effects. And now I can adjust what type of preset I'd like to apply. Now what's great about this is you can choose presets or you can choose filters too. So if you know that you want to place it through the sunshine preset, the, the natural preset in the sunshine filter, you can go through and you can choose that. I'm going to select my presets here. I'm going to choose the Liz's Vintage Presets category. And then I'm going to choose that warm vintage sunshine preset that we just made. Now what's great about this is you'll see that the click to add module is on the top and the bottom of my perfect effects pane. What that means is I can add another module if I want to. So let's click to add a module here and I'm going to choose perfect watermark. Let's say we want to add a watermark to our image. Up at the top you have a file drop down menu. This is where you can choose which file you'd like to add. Say I want to add the on one logo. You can also click the choose button and, and choose your own one off of your desktop. And from here, I can adjust the size of my logo. You'll see it's the on one logo, so it's big or small. I can adjust the inset, how close it is to the corner and the edge of my photo. And I can adjust the opacity if I want to blend it into my image or if I want it to be at 100% and really stark and really strong. The last thing that you can do here is adjust where you want the logo to be. So right now it's in the top left hand corner. I can just click on another section of my image that I want to add it to. So let's say we want it in the bottom left hand corner there. We'll make it a little bit smaller and fade it out just a bit. Now once I've gone through and I've, I've made adjustments here inside this batch dialog, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to process each one of these images and it'll take a second while it goes through because it's going to have to create duplicates of each one of these and add in presets to all of them. When it's done, it automatically places me back into Lightroom and it gives me my original photo stacked with my new batch photo. So here's my original image and here's my after and they're just right next to each other. And each one of these files is the same way. I have my original file next to my after image. Very basic, very easy. And it's one of those things that is a lot more useful than you think it will be. I've, I've talked to a lot of people and they're like, oh, batch processing, that sounds so exciting. And then they get to it and they're like, am I going to use this? When you have 50 photos that you know you need auto adjustments to, or if you have a couple images that you all want to have that same unified black and white styling to, plus you want to go in and add a watermark. If you need to resize and add a watermark all in one fell swoop, you can do that. So many different opportunities with the batch processing tool. I think it's definitely one of the best. So, all right, you guys, it is about 9.45 here on the Pacific Coast. I said that I would save the last 10 to 15 minutes just for answering questions for you guys. It looks like there are a couple in there already, so I'll go through and start answering those. Now, really quickly, before you guys leave, I want to make sure that I link you off to our website. If you go to ononesoftware.com, up in the support and training tab, there are the live demos and webinars. These are the ones that are going to be popping up that you can watch just like this one today. If you missed any part of the webinar, just click on archived webinars. So I'm up in that support and training tab, scroll down to archived webinars. When I click this, it automatically links us to, it automatically links you to your to our YouTube page. And these are all of the different videos that we have that have been archived. And you'll see there are a whole bunch in here, including integrating Perfect Photo Suite 8 into your Lightroom workflow. Now, this one will be a little bit different than the one that you saw today, but I'll be going in and actually uploading 
this exact webinar to our YouTube page today or tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. Again, it's going to the On One Software webpage, going to support and training, and selecting archived webinars. And you'll also see that there are a whole bunch of other ones on there that you can watch too. And don't forget to keep an eye out on that live training and demos page. We've got a lot of really awesome webinars lined up for the next few weeks. Um, it is Christmas here very soon, next next week, next week. Um, so we don't have quite as many webinars next week as we would just because Christmas is going to be around the corner. But starting up at the end of December and beginning of January, we're going to be jumping right back into our webinar schedule and we're really excited. We've got a lot of really awesome stuff signed up for the next few weeks and uh, a lot of stuff that I'm really excited to show. So um, just in case you guys haven't landed here, definitely take a look and keep your eye out on that on that webinars page. You'll also see on the webinars page up in the top right hand corner, you still have access to that archived webinars link. So just in case you missed it.